Beach Cycling Podcast for the recap of Pays Vasco Stage 3. We also have some breaking team news as of uh, midday or uh, middle of the day today. Uh, the Moraine Zayman, the sporting director at Visma Lisa Bike, is leaving at the end of the season. So we'll cover that after the recap. That, yeah, so it was a... It was a busy day of news. Also, some crashes in Basque Country, probably more impactful, frankly, than this yeah. stage itself, which was really... I never thought this was... I never thought too much GC-wise could happen on this, Benji. This was just another long stage to manage. Yep, exactly. When you look at the parkour itself, you don't see that, oh, there's, there's not like a 10% a climb in there. There's just that running climb. It's like we said it yesterday. The starting point, spot of this stage has a, a climb, and we feel, thought, okay, maybe a breakaway might form there. Okay, it was not the most dangerous breakaway that did form on that climb. But then you look at the rest of the stage, and you think, okay, there's nothing there that can do GC stuff. There's one climb in the last 30, well, 20 kilometers, I'd say, with about 20k to go that climb starts, but it's like 5% for, for a few kilometers. So... That's something that even versatile sprinters can get over, and the versatile sprinters can get over that. Those are going to be the ones that control the stage and try to get the stage, and that also means a lot of the mistakes will get over, which means that it's less likely that a, a GC attack arrives on this kind of stage. But anyway, that's the parkour itself. What happened at the start of the stage? We have a breakaway. James Shaw, Felix Engelhardt, you named them a few days ago. I think it was for yesterday's stage. Benji, but... yesterday, no, I named him last night. I named, I named every possible person that's ever been in a break yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so that then when one of them does well, you say, well, I'm a genius. That's why it's easy, <laughs> this analyst gig. Remy Rocha, Ryan Tarame, and Igor Chan. I'm pretty sure that's the Asian continental champion, the one with like the, the fancy colors on his shirt for Astana. But anyway, that is the five riders in the breakaway. If you see that breakaway, you think, okay, these riders, they ain't making it to the line. There's good riders in there, but there's no real engine to really pull the gap out either there and there. And... That's what I kind of need in a breakaway like this, to be honest. In the peloton... Pause, pause there. I will pause. Don't you think, given Visma's team, Tullet didn't start this morning, Koos looked pretty, pretty mid in that time trial. I mean, mid's generous. Koos was bad in that time <laughs> trial. Don't you think if you UAE with those four GC guys, with Bora, with Sobrero and Hindley, you got these three climbs. Am I overrating how hard they are? The, the three climbs bank pushed together, especially as the break hadn't gone. It hadn't gone before the, the 10k 4% climb. Could they have tried something against Visma there or really no, because there's a 50k valley after? Well, the way I see it is, first of all, for that plan to even be considered as working, you need to put a rider in the break as a satellite rider to attack towards on the hills with one of your leaders. Because... I don't expect like a, a rolling attacks on the peloton on those climbs. That I don't see because there's too many teams involved that don't necessarily want that to happen on this stage. So what happens then? Your rider attacks your breakaway rider on those three climbs in the middle of the stage. And what then? Then you're going to have a ruler in the breakaway that helps you out as long as you can while versatile sprinter teams plus GTC teams are trying to catch you back. So yeah. you'd almost need other teams to jump into the wagon and attack with you but they might not be willing to risk that because there's half a stage to go that's afterwards. the part i'm missing i think is to say uae come up with this brilliant plan well mm -hmm. then quick step won't have that plan remco said in the interview this morning that there's nothing happening on this on this stage yeah they're not going to put lander in the move and they're going to they're going to chase and so you have three teams chasing you anyway so yeah you're probably you're right that Pie in the sky thinking. In the but in the tour we see a lot more of this sort yeah. of stuff. Like, don't you think if we saw this, this was a tour stage, me and you would be thinking, oh, there could be <laughs> jump. We've seen stage ten and twelve of the tour last year, not that different to this, and it's yeah, crazy. I, I also feel like there's more more team cohesion at the Tour de France than in these races, especially at the likes of UAE, which has multiple leaders. If you have four leaders, it's much harder to. To set up a train, thin out the pack, then attack the pack, attack to a breakaway rider ahead, because you don't have the domestiques to do it. You'd almost have to attack a full-on peloton with one of your leaders to, to do stuff on this. And that's one side. When it comes to Visma, they're also in a position, I think a lot of teams are also in a position of, we don't know if a rider is too shit compared to the other riders. So maybe on the last stage, we might be able to 
take it, that kind of stuff. You know, it's everybody's oh, the, waiting the, for stage six as well, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. And, you know, maybe they look at Vingegaard's TT and they're like, not so dominant. No guarantee. He just rides away. Certainly, Remco doesn't need to wow. do anything, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, also, I also obviously agree with you that, that I think the TT was actually quite good. And that doesn't mean he's not going to drop everybody on stage six. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, sorry, go on. Proceed with the stage. Back to the stage. Bora chase? On. Bora was chasing initially. Uh, Ineos as well. So once again, Bora chasing on the stage. I've got the same take as yesterday. If I'm Bora, I'm not basing on this stage. That's, that's my thought on this. Roglic is not in the top X favorites where I would believe that Bora needs to be the team that takes it up on themselves. And I'd rather see them have Sobrero try and sprint ahead of the other GC riders at the intermediate sprint. And then Primoz, if he wants to, I wants to risk it, sprint at the end. But I wouldn't base my entire team around trying to get some bonus seconds when it's not very likely that Roglic gets top three on the stage. So I think that's a mistake. Ineos, perfectly fine. I find it perfectly normal that they try and get the best out of the stage going to this because two years ago, and even in Romany last year, Ethan Hayter would clean these stages. Yeah, I think so. And I agree that it's... Because we, we and you discussed yesterday why the Bora chase so much and then... Uh, yeah, I couldn't really decide why. I think it was just protecting the jersey, but um, and keeping Rog safe. The safest part after the, I mean, after the crashes yesterday, Benji. What would if you're if you're the leader of uh, Quickstep, Visma, Bora, UAE? Yeah. My first thing I'm writing on the whiteboard today is get X rider through, GC leader through this stage safe. Yeah. And, and after the, the shenanigans yesterday, and who knows what the rain could come any time in the Basque Country. So. It, it's just nerves and, yeah, not, not wanting to crash so hard. But uh, brakes under control. We go through, and then the next action, Benji's off camera. Really? We see... when? Yep. when how many Ks in was this? Uh, I actually don't know how many Ks in this is. I, I'm pretty sure that the brake was almost got at this point. 40 but I reckon to 40 35. To go? Yeah. That's my guess. I was literally from the airport to my house at that point. So uh, okay. I missed half of the stage. Then my phone died. So oh, I, was, I can feel it. I can feel it. I was perishing in the fucking car because <laughs> my phone was dead, and then I well, then I had the the laptop in the back in the trunk. Then I was climbing uh, to the trunk while my parents were driving. Of course, I wasn't driving and climbing to the trunk Plastic to try and get the laptop fan. out to try and actually watch the race. And man, I've I've gone through the trenches for this one. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, speaking of going into the trenches, pardon the pun. We see from there's a, a camera moto on the rear of the peloton. There's no front moto. At that moment, because this was nothing was on really, Bora were leading the peloton. We see images of Roglic standing up. He's in the fluoro yellow leaders jersey, and he looks, quite frankly, fucked up. Like he he looked he like dazed. A big crash. His his tarmac S works tarmac is about five meters over next to a, a building, and it's through a, a left hand corner, fast corner, like a real yeah. fast corner. I think it's a descent, not a real descent, but like a bit downhill, and. uh yeah, he looked banged up. We only saw him from his left side at this time, but he's like uh, touching his head a bit. We see yep. the doc come over, does a concussion check. Uh, and then uh, yeah, i got to say, he looked wobbly to me. He does look wobbly to me. I trust the person, the doctor that is there, that they did a proper concussion check because it looked like they did. And I would expect them to do so when they're at least doing something in front of his face on camera. But I am wondering with how wobbly he looked, whether he would have sh should have start uh, have started anyway. Because to me, it's, it looked pretty obvious that he was dazed. Would would they have restarted if it was a a random domestique? I'm not sure. Who no, knows? It depends on the rider as well. Like there's one thing we yeah. know about Roglic. Like he's got to be one of the one of the toughest riders in the peloton. Like except for the of, limb, he would still ride. Yeah, like. He, he, his pain tolerance must be crazy because, yeah, he's had so many crashes and he, he'll just keep riding. So, uh, but there's actually footage of the crash from the, the Basque uh, daily newspaper, El Diario, El Diario Basco, uh, from a, uh, I presume they've got it from a bystander who was standing on that corner. And it's a left hand downhill. And we can't exactly see, there's no heli shot, but we, the footage basically starts with, with Roglic already down, but he, his Bora teammates were on the front. I don't know if he overlapped wheels. I don't know if he braked too much, but he, his head goes straight to that deck. 
and uh, basically slides all the way to the, the banking. I don't know if he... It looked like, thankfully, the curb was smooth. I, I can't see exactly, but yeah, if it had been a, a race curb, like when Bala crashed, then you can really hurt your knee or shoulder badly like Bala did. But certainly a very heavy fall, and Roglic took the worst of it. Uh, but he got back up, and we saw late, later that he had... Uh, uh, abrasions on his right hand side but and at that point i thought he's not coming back benji two minutes behind Ineos were pushing 30 k's to go for haters stage win other teams are worried about keeping their gc guys in front and i thought Roglic was never coming back but then bora dropped the whole team back and uh, he actually made it back no problem in the end exactly that is true and at that point i'm back at looking at a screen and we're looking at an intermediate sprint that's coming up Intermediate spin between GC riders, that is. 3, 2, 1 seconds available for the, for the riders there. And Quickstep was there at a proper train, like three riders in front of Remco. Then on the right side of that, you see the other teams trying to build a train as well. Mainly little trek for Skelmose. So those two trains. And then behind that, you see three riders from Visma Lisa bike, but it's Lou Van Belle who is sprinting. So the fault behind that seems to be Lou Van Belle trying to take seconds away from Remco and from... Uh, from Skelmos and for, from whoever sprints for it, to be honest. Because, let's be honest, it's unlikely that Vingegaard wins a sprint against Remco and Skelmos. It was Jonas, right? sprint. What Was it Was it Jonas? Yeah, you're disrespecting him. Really? I think, Commentator yeah. said Luvon Bale. Nah, I recognize I'm, that. I'm going to check. <laughs> it was Jonas. I am curious now. <laughs> it is Jonas. Yeah, Luvon Bale bigger than him. Um... <laughs> Uh, he opened up. He opened it up early too. Uh, I think Del Toro took uh, took second. Remco took first, and actually, yeah, Jonas beat Schelmoser. He did a better sprint than Schelmoser. He did. Uh, <laughs> the so, disrespect. Yeah, he... My bad. I didn't know your game, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he... <laughs> but at least it was dry. If it was wet, maybe you do send Love and Bella. Uh, hey, I just to... followed commentators. I'm gonna blame. Uh, I don't even remember who was commentating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's not too significant, uh, but certainly three seconds for Remco, he'll take that. Uh, and obviously Roglic was in no state at that point to contest the intermediate sprint. Uh, we come into the finish. Ineos had been pacing pretty much all day. Kvyatkovsky was in really, really good position for the sprint. It's a slight draggy uphill. It's not like, yeah, it's not a, a perfectly flat sprint, uh, given that it is the Basque country. There's a bit of a mess. Azure Desert, or Decathlon Azure Desert come up early like they did yesterday, but it wasn't as effective as yesterday. Hater was too deep and around the outside as they were on the right hand side as they're going around the left bend, really in the wind early. Uh, and Aaron Brew jumps early. I'm not sure if Serrano let him out uh, or not. Dutch. He let everybody else out. Yeah. Oh, but I don't <laughs> know where Serrano was. Maybe he crashed. Uh, he didn't start? What the fuck? Uh, anyway, he's not on PCS full. Uh, and Quinton Hermans, who I think I disrespected yesterday and said he's not had the best time of it since leaving uh, Anton Marche, he, uh, he wins the sprint actually quite he easily. Hasn't. Well, he hasn't. It's still correct. Yeah, he came like second in Liège, best on Liège. Um, but he wins the sprint ahead of Eduardo Zambanini here. Bahrain do a bit of a mother star. Aaron Baru's third, De Preto, who I thought might go on the break for Jaco. He's a very good rider. Fourth. Nikias aren't fifth. I'm not sure if he was supposed to lead out Zambanini or what, uh, but yeah, Hater sixth, Gregoire uh, seventh. Uh, good to see that he's at least there after his crash yesterday. Godou didn't start this morning because he had a, a cut in his hand with ten stitches, which is a shame. Avoclin uh, eighth, Vito Brad ninth, and Valentin Retalio Retalio uh, tenth, Lapera sixteenth. So the decathlon boys went a bit too early today. I do want to say when it comes to Ethan Hater. We can talk about the positioning as much as possible, but in the no, last he had, corner, he, he had no snap. He lost, he lost Cuyato's position, uh, wheel in the in the corner because someone dove under him, and he, he other riders might have fought for the position, but he just he just didn't fight for the position at all, and the other rider came in front of him, and that's how he lost the the wheel of Kuyatkovsky. and then going into the final, like, sorry, but yes, it's not the perfect position. That's true, but it is the kind of position where. Big hater two years ago, cleaning up stages. Roman the hater even last year could still win from that position. Yeah, like no, just no. He didn't have the them, speed. But Zambanini and Depreto came second and fourth, and he was he was running next to Depreto. 
Yeah. So, but he said in an interview yesterday that he hadn't been doing, uh, he hadn't done any sprint training or just some gym work. Um, maybe he's just lowering expectations, but uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, in your yeah, road, if he doesn't do the sprint training, then does that mean the team doesn't know that he's not at the level that he was before in sprints? Or I, I don't know. Is I this mean, just have these this. last two days been a bit of a fluke that maybe? Well, yesterday we can't really count that was positioning, but I'm not feeling a hater as in what he was anymore. And I feel like if we, it's like it's a bit like Foss time trial, you know? He's not that level right now. He's not showing that level at least. So we, I was expecting it every time. I don't Lonely expect result. it. Well, uh, we, uh, we, we call them as one of the two favorites for the last two stages. What do you mean yeah. not expecting it? You yeah, picked them for two stages. <laughs> what else are Ineos going to do? I, I agree. Send people in the breakaway on tomorrow. Yeah, I, I don't would, know. I would also have probably tried to send Kwiatkowski and Freyla in the break today and then hedge your bets a little bit. But yeah. Uh, yeah, to be honest, yeah. I still think, I, I, I don't think they did anything wrong pacing today. It just, uh, it just didn't work out. Um, but you got to go for it. you got to be able to win it. I've got a feeling that Lawrence Piffy is the rider that Ethan Hater should have become. I think, because he I... has the snap in those sprints, and Ethan Hater's problem was that we expected him to be in the classics, but his positioning sucks too much to do it. But Piffy got that mongrel dog in him. He's like... <laughs> He does. Sorry, but I'm talking about what kind of races they can do well and not if they'd have the dog in him or not. <laughs> well, it Matt, for, cla for yeah. classics, <laughs> shitty classics in the rain, when you try, you're, you're going to kill someone to undercut them into the Molenberg, so you enter it's three true. positions better. You need that dog in you. And Pithy, <laughs> Pithy doesn't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> he'll just do it. Um, I also think Hayter's 20 and 30 minute power is, whilst Pekilo is far superior to Pithy's. Uh, but I take your point. I take your point. Like, I'm sure if you send if Pithy was here today, he's in this finish, and I think he dusts everybody. I think uh, so. Too. In this, I mean, look at Paranese. He's against Patterson, like serious coy, serious guys. Yeah. Uh, Calvin's great ocean road race. I mean, Binny actually was there. Like, it wasn't like there was nobody there. Like, and Binny was good <laughs> this spring. Uh, but and it's Corbin Strong. We missed the crash though in the last three Ks. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Before we jump into that. This once again means that Ineos is without a stage win, and I find it harder to believe that tomorrow and the day after might be that. It's, it's still possible. The parkour Break. is still there. Break, like you say, is possible for those stage. We'll jump into them a bit, but also GC possibilities. And then I'm like, when will the next Ineos win be? And then I'm like, Roman DTT with Tarling is what comes into mind, because Tarling is the man you can trust for stage wins right now. Just find a world to a flat TT that Ganner and, and Remco aren't at, and Tiling will win it. It's not that complicated. Well, um, we had a few already, but they didn't send them. <laughs> yeah, well, the past is the past. Uh, you're right, Romandy. <laughs> Romandy looks pretty good uh, for that. Or Swiss. Usually has two time trials, but one might be Healy. Uh, there was a crash in the last three kilometers, again involving yeah. GC contenders. Uh, Ayuso was involved, and he actually not just... Uh, morally held up by the crash he really crashed and it looked like he was a little bit banged up i couldn't tell exactly uh couch doctor whether he was more sort of you know sometimes guys are pissed they crashed and they're a bit dusty but they're not really that hurt or whether he was really hurt he got he was straight back on his not straight back but he was back on his bike two hands on the handlebars uh, it's not like he was holding one off or like soler you know but uh certainly he crashed decently hard and uh also vingegaard was very close to that very, very close to that uh, crash too. And I think he and Visma just miss out. Remco seemed to be fine as well. Uh, Roglic actually, perversely, held much better position in the final of today yep. than, the, than the previous day, uh, despite losing half the skin on his right side. So he actually survived this. He was well in front of this crash and Bora did a really good job. Sharkman and co. Jungles actually in uh, the last hour. But uh, the provisional results do have a split. Uh, of Vingegaard, Vine, Dunbar, Cepeda on 32 seconds, but they were within the group in the last three Ks. So being this being a flat finish, I assume that will be amended and they'll be given the same time. Uh, unlike the crash yesterday, which was outside the magic, the magic three Ks to go. Felix yeah. Gull, 
also called out he, but he, I assume he was in that group. Uh, I'm just trying to look for some other GC we'll never know. guys. I mean, we will know at some point. <laughs> they'll they'll do so. the confirmed results, I hope. <laughs> Shkeli, Alex, Shkeli, Mo, oh, the whole of Trek are on 202. Yeah. Bernard Mollema, Shkelmo is a gag and half. Uh, but uh, we, I mean, it's been a little bit of time. I mean, this is very strange, Benji, no? Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm really... Ayuso has been given zero minutes. Yeah, but I think that's because it's it's obvious that he was part of the crash. So I think it will oh, take some time. All the others have to plead for it. Yeah, I, th I think now it's the team manager be like, pick up the phone, call the call the commissaire, say, oh, la, 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 my rider, come on, he was too far behind because crash. That kind of stuff. I don't know what country that was, by the way. Just disrespect to someone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It'll be very interesting for this race indeed. If if Vinga has been put on a 32 second handicap, I mean, that opens up stage six a fair bit. Uh, and uh, but I assume that'll be amended. Santi also on 52 seconds. So not we're just going to assume for present purposes that no GC guys are uh, lost time in relation to that crash because it was a full full yeah. peloton. Uh, stage four tomorrow from uh, Ejari Aranats to Legutio. Let's go, Legutio, 158Ks. And it's quite similar to today in that there's a lot of flat riding on a 600, 500 meter plateau uh, up in the, I think we must be closer to Burgos, like in the, near the border of Castilla Leon, near Gas, Vittoria Gastais. Uh, they go up, up Opakua, 6K, 6% in the first 40Ks, but it's a flat first uh, 45 minutes. Then there's mm -hmm. a no categorized climbs for. 100 k oh no not 100 can't count 70 k's uh and then they do the olaeta olaeta climb 3.2 k's 5.7 percent but finally we have a fake news climb benji finally yep. the first uh 1.8 k's are about eight percent nine percent descent the unjila also fake news ish it's got a k and a half at nine and a half percent Mm -hmm. Little Valley, then the Lens Gazaga, 3.1 case, 8.5%. And uh, I wouldn't say it's fake news, but the first 500 meters are false flat, and then it's basically well, 10%. 10 yeah. it's, it's, it's over 10% the whole way. I, I would call this really a 2.5K, 9.5% climb, yeah. is what I would call this. <laughs> so it is fake, I guess. About Intermediate sprint four? at the bottom, too. Exactly, and why? Put it at the top so that the GC contenders race for it. That's what ASO does. Yeah, but the danger, if you put it at the top as well, is that you're kind of... I Yeah, I see what you mean, but it also risks them to wait for the sprint at the top. So it's like, it goes two ways, you know? It depends on which riders you have. Then you have yeah. the climbers attacking the, the sprinty climbers, if that makes sense. But anyway, at the top would be better than at the foot, because at the foot, people are going to be like, I won't sprint for it. Question is... I think it's hard enough for GC. Yeah, I mean, you know these bass climbs. I'm, I'm sure this road will be some bullshit like uh, Quest of the Cabo to Goat Path. You know, like, ho yeah. hopefully, hopefully it's like uh, too wide with steep pinches even within those those 10% average in the last two and a half Ks. So, um, yeah, you never know in the bass. And also with like, with Roglic banged up, Benji, mm -hmm. he's still in the GC lead. If you're UAE, you should test him, no? Yes, but I also have the feeling of like... Yeah, I fully agree. Okay, Do, let's, let's have that clear. Yes, yeah. they should test him. When it comes to water teams, I'm even considering... I think... With Remco, I'm not sure, because these kind of climbs... In LPL, it works out, but in Grand Tours and stage races, these climbs have not been his forte, I would say. Yeah. He's been beaten on these kind of climbs in, in Grand Tours and in stages. So... Uh, that's not really... Yeah, like in the, in the Vuelta stage, Roglic beat him in the sprint in. Yeah. Where, uh, I can't remember what stage it was. Nine, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I can't but remember. I think someone should try stuff. Like, we saw Louis Mankey's attack on today's club, so goat, Louis Mankey's yeah. might attack on this one. Let him cook. But uh, I hope that uh, we see actual GC riders go for it. But I also then think, who is going to control it? And that's where I'm a bit... I'm sure. Should, shouldn't UAE try like 
isn't this where you play the, the you have four GC riders plus Mark Soler. You have like five. And Soler attacked today, by the way. Yeah, so but he's up for it. Isn't this you where you do play that. With, with the Valley after? Yes, but you can do that plan without controlling the race. As in... Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. If you control the breakaway and you go to that climb and you do the rolling attacks on the climb and after the climb, if it fails, then the others might take bonus seconds. So let the break fucking go and then do it anyway. Because that way you have the backup of not having bonus seconds if, if there's faster GC riders that you can't drop in that sense. Yeah. But, um... Like, if Roglic didn't crash today, Bora would control yeah. that. I would pick, I would pick Roglic for this, but he, man, he, I'm sorry, but nah, he crashed really hard. But winning, hard. though. His sprint's not looks so good, but still, he's still got a pretty good sprint, and he also times it better than Remco. Yeah. Um, but but Remco's pass. timing today was on point, mate. <laughs> yeah, true. At the intermediate sprint. Yeah, yeah. Remco looks much more relaxed here compared to Paranese, no? Yeah. I, well, I, so, I mean, at least I'm not in the team bus, but <laughs> the team with, with Lando and Vivaca here seems pretty like yeah, laughing after the IS stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it seems a lot more, lot better. Um, so, so what do you think? You th but do you, you said really break. think? No, I didn't say break. Oh, I mean, Kwiatkowski, Freyler, gotta be in the break. Like without Pidcock here, mm -hmm. those two, this is such a good finish for them, uh, and for Ineos. There's also teams like. Like Quinton Hermans, frankly. Yeah. Quinton Hermans or a lot of, you know, obviously UAE won't be allowed, but Quentin Pache, Simon Keshke, uh, I'll mention even Bajoli, I don't know, like Teo as well. Like, Moser. No, he can't be in the break. I mean, what? I know, uh, I know, but I look at the state. I, I, for some reason, I was looking oh, yeah, at full Nadej did... Classics results and then I was but shouting we... Skial Moser. <laughs> but we, I mean, imagine. But yeah, we, we should have probably, we've, uh, maybe we're not rating him enough. We should have mentioned him when we're talking about who could win this from the GC guys yeah, in a sprint. That's like what I meant. Moser, he, he dusted McNulty and, and uh, Jorgensen in Paranese, right? Because I straight up looked at Gregoire first because I was like, has he done nah. races with this kind of climb? It seems too hard for him. Only then I looked the at Ardesh where he got second behind Ayuso, so Ayuso could do well on this. But then Skelmos was third in that race, so. For some reason, I'm looking at Full Night of Dash Classic results to see whether someone can do well at, at this Basque Country stage. But Ayuso can definitely win this. Kjellmose can win this. Evenepoel can win this. Roglic can win this. But Rog, uh, well, Roglic uh, could have won this. Yeah, I don't know now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonas can win it. Yeah, but... I agree. He, need to he, drop, he needs to drop everyone, though. Unless I think he, he sprints sprint. everybody again. I think he win a sprint. Not against everybody, man. No, against not against Skelmos everybody. I'm, no, no, I'm talking if, if, he, if he can convince poor or like Brandon McNulty or to like ride on front, in front of him. <laughs> I, I, why would McNulty do that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so but he's not... Vingegaard's sprint isn't complete dog shit. Like yeah. he, can, he, can actually, he can actually sprint. Uh, I'm going to go completely different. I think a, a decathlon rider is going to win this for some reason. All right, who? Uh, Alex Baudin. From the Baudin. break. Okay, okay. I'm going to go with Peo Bilbao from a small group of GC riders. Times it just right. He beat yeah, Alaphilippe in a, in a hard Muri stage uh, two years ago in, in Basque Country. And you're right. For some reason, even though he's 63 kilos and can win flat sprints, he cannot sprint uphill for shit. Yeah, defies all logic, but Bilbao is, yeah, I'll pick Bilbao, just guess also his home race, and I like the rider. Um, also, Santi, Santi in a flyer, I don't know his exact shape. It's really tough to know. It will, let's be clear a bit. We will see tomorrow. They're not going to walk up this climb. Some, yeah. that someone is going to go for it. We will see who is serious and who is not here. Um, and so I'm I said well down from the break, but I actually don't think it's going to be a breakaway win. Some team is going to control it. I think so. From the breakaway, I would like Archie Ryan solo. Uh, he's very, very good on those sort of climbs. And EF obviously would, would try to be in there. Aaron Baru should obviously be trying to go in the breakaway uh, because he, he climbs very, very well. And he won even a stage with a climb like this in the Basque Country. And uh, Langolotti or who else do I like? 
Half the star lists at this point. <laughs> yeah, Quinton Hermans, I already said. He should be yeah. on a breakaway again. Breakaway back to back. Uh, or Oscar Only. I don't see... What's your, what's your final name? One name, each of us. Come on. I said Bilba. Okay, I'm going to go for... Uh, I'm not going to go for Baudin. I've switched my mind. I'm going to go for... Ayuso. Even with the crash? I mean, he looked okay. He looked okay, okay, he didn't look that okay. You're right. Fuck Del Toro for some reason. Fuck it. What do you mean for some reason? His sprint is insane. <laughs> yeah, but 10% <laughs> climb of four kilometers? True. I mean, Del Toro is going to have to do the thing where he's going to have to practice staying with the uh, GC boys if they kick it off. Uh, he can't ride his own tempo. All right, that is Basque Country today and tomorrow. The, the last bit of news, this was leaked last night. I don't know if it was a Dutch or Belgian newspaper. Uh, it was like an it was like not a cycling paper or organization uh, leaked that sportive director Moraine Zaman would be leaving Team Visma Lisa bike, and then a press release came out at one o'clock today on the team website. I'll read it. I'll read out the, the there's some long quotes from uh, Moraine and and Richard Pluger, but I'll read out the the copy at the top. Uh, sportive director Moraine Zaman leaves Team Visma Lisa bike at the end of the season. Zayman, active for the team since 2012 and sportive director of Team Visma Lisa Bike since 2017, is leaving the team at the end of the season. After almost 13 years of being jointly responsible for the successful rebuilding of the team, Zayman is now opting for a new step in his career. And we saw, given that there was a simultaneous tweet from Azed Alkmaar, uh, which is a foot, one of the top clubs in the Dutch Eredivisie. Uh, Football is correct. That... Uh, they said Moraine, they welcome to the club Moraine Zayman. He'll officially take office as general manager at Azad Alkmaar on December 1, 2024. Yes. First big of loss, all, big loss to the team. I lost my feeling when it comes to football, so I don't know how good Azad Alkmaar is. Yeah, compared I don't to know. The other I'm sorry. Teams. I don't know much about Dutch, or Dutch football, I got to say. Like I 10 years I, ago, I was hardcore into football, but now there's only one superior sport. And my first feeling about this is, well, I think this is a proper loss for Visma because he was an active architect when it comes to the team. And he was kind of, to me, Marijn felt like the kind of guy that was like controlling everything, you know? Like that was like, his eye was on every part of the team and it's hard for someone to replace that specific role because you need to know something about everything. And that's, that's something. He's been there for a long time. He's been part of every part of the team. I don't know, it's going to be Oh, for some reason, I'm, 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 th this makes me feel bearish about Visma a little bit in the, in the, in the long-term future. And the second feeling I have is that cycling itself, Marijn said for, I think, last year on, a, on, a, on some Dutch podcast that he would like to go from cycling to the football world at some point. And... That's, there's so many people in this sport, or at least quite a few notable people in this sport, that use cycling as a stepping stone to a different sport or to a different ambition. Because eh? for Marijn, that's towards football. And then when you've you got La Parcian trying to use the UCI leading position to become a person important in the Olympics committee and so forth, it's, I don't know, there, I've just got this feeling that cycling is being fucking disrespected, okay? Like, we are the superior sport, and people need to act like that. That's how I feel. Was Thomas Bach in cycling? Who the fuck is Thomas Bach? The head of the IOC. Never heard of that man. Uh, no, he was a fencer. But he was a but, composer, music composer. But yeah, you're right. You're, um, you know, it's strongly rumored that David Lapartien will be, uh, wants, to, wants that job, which is the president of the IOC at some point but it's in the also, future. I see... Brailsford? Put yourself in the position of Marijn at the moment. You've been with the team for so long. You've gotten the team, with the, uh, the help of others around you as well, but you've been a big part of getting the team to the point where they've first won the Tour de France, then three Grand Tours in one year. The likelihood of that going upwards in the next few years, that becoming better than three Grand Tours in a year, is just not super likely. Which means that I like the idea of stepping out and going to a new project at the height of the achievement. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can personally say that I really, really enjoyed working with Moraine. Uh, he was, uh, and still, it's not 
it's the end of 2024. Uh, so there's still this season and uh, where nothing changes. Uh, but yeah, Moraine been really, really, really good to me personally. So I'm re always really, really grateful to him for that. And uh, I learned a lot from him. And um, he's from Alkmaar, from North Holland. Football's a big sport. And uh, I'm sure he'll have success, whatever he does. But yeah, that was the big news this morning. And uh, yeah, it's, but it's also, of course, as you said, Benji, it's like, you know, that change means that there needs to be, uh, there has to be changes because he's, uh, he is, he is everywhere. Um, but yeah, in case people didn't see that, he's like, uh, would you say the equivalent of Machin? I, oh, that's difficult. Because Machin every went team from has scouting. A there's no, there's no uniform structure, is there, in all the teams? They all have different yeah. structures. I, I don't know, because, like, in every team, it's slightly different. I don't know how close every team manager is towards their team in every single team. Um, with, with, with Lefebvre, I've sometimes got the idea that it's become a bit more distanced than a year ago or two years ago, is the kind of vibe I'm getting. And then, when I look at oh, what other teams exist on this planet, um, with Ineos, with Brelsford, it looked like the distance was quite big already last year, because it was also gradually stepping out of this yeah. sport. So it's, it feels like with every team it's different, but the position yeah. that Marijn has right now is a position that is hard to replace. You need somebody that knows something about everything, and good luck finding that. But yeah, it's, uh, we'll see how that, uh, how that plays out. Um... What else? Is there any other news, Benji? It's Luke's birthday uh, well, today. Yeah, it's Luke's birthday. So happy birthday, Luke, our producer. Yeah, he, uh, he deserves a happy birthday from every single person watching this on YouTube in the comment section. So I'm expecting high amount of comments right there. But also there's some news about the Rubey parkour changing, but uh, we can yes. preview that once uh once we do the Paris Rubey preview, I reckon. Yeah, they're changing the run into Aramberg. Uh because yep. it's a that straight line normally. Okay, so they're gonna not go straight in at 60 k's an hour they're going to try and make the riders go enter a bit slower i, I can't say i disagree with that uh but personally i agree it's it's an idea and i want to see it into action but you're also moving the the choke point the choke point is now narrowing into the cobble sector at high speed which is dangerous now the choke point will be the chicane that comes before it i don't know how serious that chicane is um if someone crashes there on sunday Everybody's gonna be complaining anyway about the change, you know? Like Exactly. People are like, why'd you put the road furniture in there? And everyone <laughs> raced to that point, it squeezed, crash. You know, pit riders are also gonna crash because they're racing for a point, but also like they enter Arenberg on the straight line at 70 kilometers an hour, 65 kilometers an hour. Like, it's crazy. Uh, I've seen so. a lot of people say ride Arenberg the opposite way. Because he doesn't have the descent. Because yeah, Arenberg is a descent at the start. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm okay with them trying that. Like, I have yeah. no issue with that. And there has been, like, last year, it affected the race massively. There was a huge crash with Fred Wright and Dylan Van Baal. And I think Asgren? I saw... And Asgren. And I think I saw a video of the crash with Fred Wright. Like, he didn't even do anything wrong. Like, his, his wheel just obliterated, just disintegrated or something. And then guys behind him and then crash. And then there's a huge blockage. And whoever's behind it, you're never coming back. And then... Uh, we saw that. So yeah, I, I got no problem with them changing it and trying something different because it is it's it is probably the first five hundred meters of Arenberg, probably the most dangerous section of road used in the whole UCI calendar. Ooh. Probably. Downhill cobbles, hmm. then the cobbles are this big. Yeah, probably. That you hit in a straight line in the past in a sprint lead out. It is the reason that they don't put it in the women's race because it would be one of the first sectors that a full peloton yeah. would go into. Because because now in the men's race there are sectors before it. I think there's now uh, it's sector oh, nineteen item back. There's twenty nine like, in total. So then sectors like eight before or that. ten sectors before yeah. So yeah, there's quite a bit of uh, stuff happening there. But hey, the change is happening. We'll talk about if it influences the race in our Pyro Bay preview or not. Hopefully not too much in terms of the luck component. Yep. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the podcast. We'll see you with the recap of maybe the first GC stage. Certainly there might be some action in uh, Basque Country tomorrow. Hopefully Roglic and Ayuso 
are unaffected and come back fighting, it, it really yeah. uh, it'd be a shame for the race if two of the big hot favourites were knocked out by crashes before we even got to stages four and six. So hopefully they rest up, have a good night's sleep as best they can, and uh, we will as well. We'll see you uh, tomorrow for stage four. Ciao. Bye.